Have you ever lent someone a book you loved? Played a song that meant a lot to you so that someone else could experience the same joy you did? What if you couldn't? What if you could go to jail just for trying? That's the world with DRM. DRM stands for Digital Rights Management. It's a collection of technologies that exist to control the usage of some media or other in digital form. It can include copy protection, anti-cheating mechanisms in games, and all sorts of other measures. Imagine there was someone stood in your house, always hovering beside your bookshelf. They don't do anything, just watch you picking up any of the books you bought, reading them, putting them back and selecting another. You see them taking notes on what you read, how long for, and whether you finished the book or not. It's weird having them there, but they don't get in the way. Well, not until you try and hand one of your books to a visiting friend, to say, I loved this, you should read it too. At that point, they snatch it out of your hand and put it back on the shelf. You try again, and once more they stop you, warning you that you are not allowed to do that. But I bought it, you protest. I can lend it to my friend. No, you can't. And in fact, you've broken the rules by even trying, so I'm going to take all your books now. And they pack up every book you own, load them into a van, and take them away. Nobody would stand for that. And yet, that's what we do almost every time we buy an ebook these days. And the same holds for music, movies, TV shows, games, software, everything digital that you think is bought is actually licensed under very restrictive terms. The devices you use to watch, read or listen are complicit, controlling the usage of the product to ensure you don't do anything the vendor doesn't want you to. This is digital rights management. Back when all goods were physical, there was automatically a limit on how much sharing you could do. If you'd lent a friend your copy of a book, you couldn't lend it to anyone else, or even read it yourself until they gave it back. Same went for an album, on CD, cassette or vinyl. A movie on VHS, DVD, Blu-ray. So while the producers of these items would much rather everyone bought their own copy, they couldn't really stop you. And if you bought something only to realise you didn't like it, or had finished with it, you could give it away, or sell it. Now as more and more things went digital, it became very simple to make endless copies of something in your possession. If you email that friend a copy of an ebook, you still have the original. They can read it any time they like, so can you, and they don't need to return their copy either. More than that, you can email everyone you know a copy, and they can all read them at once. Or you can put it on the internet, and everyone in the world can read it, while the author only ever sold one copy. Now, as an author myself, I'd consider this a bad thing. Literally billions of people getting access to something of mine for nothing when I have bills to pay. No thank you. And I believe most people agree. They can see the difference between loaning a book to a friend, selling it secondhand, or gifting it to a free library, as compared to handing out copies to everyone who wants one. So there's the reason DRM exists. It's not about managing the rights you have, it's about the rights held by the producer of the content. They don't want you to share it, so they implement technical barriers to prevent it. And they're backed by laws that make it a criminal offence to even attempt to bypass those measures. But hey, problem solved. If I sell one copy of my book, I can rest assured that only the person who bought it can ever read it. Anyone else wants it, they have to buy it too. Movie studios and music companies pioneered this, but book publishers and marketplaces quickly jumped on board too. And surely the public would agree, piracy is bad, they're not thieves. So everyone wins, right? Well, except people love to lend each other books. And if you buy a copy of a book, isn't it odd that no one else in your house can read it? If you bought a physical copy, it's right there on the shelf. So, Amazon and other stores implemented a lending permission. You can share books with people in your home, or your friends, and it locks you out until they return it. So, just like the old days. But you get the advantage that if they forget to return it, you can just revoke their permission and get it back without even talking to them. That's pretty neat, and it solves the problem. All you have to do is allow the store to control your books, use their app to read them, and sign up to the terms and conditions that nobody reads. Except it's entirely at their whim. Amazon could wake up tomorrow and decide it's not worth their time and effort and just stop allowing it. Or you might upset them in some arbitrary way and they decide to delete your account, locking you out of all the books you bought. And both of those things have happened. People have bought a book from Amazon, only for Amazon to realise they didn't actually have the right to sell it after all. They did the digital equivalent of breaking into your house and taking the book back, nuking it from everyone's Kindle. And in a great you-couldn't-make-it-up moment, the book in question was 1984. 
Microsoft shut down their ebook store, rendering all the books people bought with it unreadable. Fortunately, they did offer refunds, but that doesn't always happen. I myself bought Blu-rays that came with a, quote, free digital copy. The service that supplied that, called Ultraviolet, went under. They kindly allowed me to transfer my copies to Google Play, except for the ones Google didn't have rights to. Those I just lost. Apple often lose the rights to some movies and TV shows, and they'll just remove your access to them when that happens. All suppliers will. You paid for it, but the terms and conditions you didn't read say that you paid for a license under certain circumstances. So they can do that. And good luck selling something locked with DRM. You can't sell a second-hand ebook, movie, or album. Decide to move from iPhone to Android? Well, get ready to buy everything all over again. None of your apps will come with you, nor your movies, TV shows, ebooks. None of this helps you, the consumer. But you might think it's still a small price to pay to help out those starving artists, right? As long as they're getting paid, and no one's illegally sharing their work. Except it hasn't worked. Literally nothing is unbreakable, including DRM. Every book, album, movie is available online for the taking if you know where to look. The season finale of House of the Dragon was available for unpaid download within minutes of the show ending. Only one person has to know how to do it, and then everyone can snag a copy. The only exceptions are the ones too small to be in demand. Like mine, for example. Because the reality is that billions of people aren't going to read my books. Or anyone's. Sure, Lord of the Rings has sold 150 million copies, but most of the books on the New York Times bestseller list can get there with under 6,000 sales in a week. For most authors, even being discovered by your target audience is a challenge. We can pay for ads, sure, but think about all your favourite books. Did you buy them because of a Facebook ad? Or because somebody else told you about it? Word of mouth is vital to us. Someone saying, hey, read this, is the best way to get my words out there. And anything that makes that harder isn't in my best interests. A major publisher has gone entirely DRM-free and saw an increase in piracy rates of precisely nothing. That was in 2012, and they're still DRM-free today. They've not lost out. DRM doesn't work. So I don't enable DRM on my books. I don't want them pirated, but DRM isn't going to stop that anyway. What it will do is stop you moving your things from one device to another, or letting someone else read them. If I enable DRM on my books, you get a worse experience as a paying customer than a pirate does. My approach is to write the best books I can, and hope that people feel they're worth paying for. I also work to build a relationship with my readers through my blog, newsletter, social media, and it feels wrong to treat you all as potential thieves and put you in digital handcuffs, just in case. But some authors feel differently. They either believe that DRM is beneficial to them or protects their fragile income. I don't blame them for believing that, it's how it's sold. On Amazon, for example, it's a simple tick box that reads, add DRM to inhibit unauthorized access to or copying of digital content files. Well, that sounds like something I'd want, right? And if I hit learn more, it gives a slightly more nuanced view. Some authors will want the protection that DRM offers. Others want readers to share their work so they can reach a wider audience. But if you choose DRM, customers will still be able to lend the book to another user for a short period, and can also purchase the book as a gift for another user from the Kindle store. Unfortunately, that protection is an illusion. Note also how it says you might want readers to share, but implies you can do that if you select DRM. So I don't believe that authors who tick that little box are trying to constrain their readers, I genuinely think they're unaware of the problems of DRM. And a lot of authors will have that decision taken away from them by their publisher too. So don't go blasting anyone for having DRM on their books, okay? In fact, if I ever produce audiobooks, Audible will not let me disable DRM at all. Nor will any of the services that can get my ebooks into libraries, since they rely on it to enforce the borrowing periods. So even though I don't want it, I won't always have the freedom to choose. But whenever I can, I will disable DRM and any other customer hostile measures. If you want to read more about how DRM is harmful, I recommend the Electronic Frontier Foundation and their site Defective by Design. I have links to more information in the description below and would love to know what you think. Can DRM be justified? Does it play a part in your purchasing decisions? Or are you just now learning about it for the first time?